He doesn't belong to me. Yeah. Christ made me perfect. Yeah. He made me unique. He made me in his image and in his likeness. He raised me up to sit in heavenly places. He sealed me unto redemption. He has literally caused me to be that which he expects me to be. He said, I've given you life and life more abundantly. Why is it that we spend so much time living a life which is second class when God has given us first class Amen. trouble? Amen. What, what is it that God has that we, we haven't yet got? Amen. Listen, if you're praying for revival, get on your knees. Because it starts with you. It's not going to start with your next door neighbor. If God's put the weight of revival on you, get on your knees and don't move till you move in it. If God's put the weight of revival in your life, get on your knees and then begin to move in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Begin to change someone's life. Begin to lay hands on somebody. Let somebody's legs grow. Let somebody's eyes see. I've seen more eyes see and legs grow than I care to imagine. I've seen the deaf healed. I've seen the blind walk. I've literally travelled the world. I've had babies brought to me, put into my arms. No language. I can't speak Urdu. So they put a baby in my hands and just put their hands together in a form of prayer. So you, you take the baby, you pray, and you give the baby back, and they come back the next day, baby good. Four-year-old boy, never spoke. Totally deaf. You kneel down and you just show compassion, and the baby runs away. The boy's running, and he's screaming, and he's shouting, and he's never spoken for four years. God does something. Move in the anointing. Move in the power of the God has given you a gift and a calling. He expects you to use it. He expects you to walk in it. He expects you to stand in it. And when the going gets tough, he expects you to stand and stand again. You know, in the book of... Um, Exodus, there's a beautiful picture of a, of, a, of a breastplate that the high priest is caused to wear. And it's got the 12 tribes on it, it's got the, 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 it's got the jewels on it. It's a beautiful breastplate, but to the Israelites it was a breastplate of judgment. By the time you get to Isaiah, it's become a breastplate of righteousness. Yeah. You move into the New Testament, into Ephesians, and it's still the breastplate of righteousness. Yes. But by the time you get into Thessalonians, it's become the breastplate of faith. Yeah. From Genesis through to Revelation, God is preparing his people. God is yeah. causing his yeah. people to rise up. God is causing his people to understand that they are powerful. You have delegated authority. Yeah. You have been authorized to use the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazareth. You have literally been authorized to use the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So when you see the, the scriptures, you find that when they prayed, they prayed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Why did they pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth? It's pretty easy. Jesus was a common name in Israel. It was Jesus this and Jesus that and Jesus that and this and that. But we know the Jesus. We know the one who created the heavens and the earth. We know the one that raised up the dead. We know the one that brought life where there was no life. We know the one that literally speaks into the darkness and calls light out of it. We know the one who literally created us. We literally have the authority to speak in his name. We can speak into the darkness and we can call it out. We can call life out of the darkness. We can call life out of sickness. We can call life out of every situation. We need to know who we are, folks. We need to know what we have. And the only reason we don't know what we have and we don't know who we are is because we don't read this. We spend so much time bitching and piecing with the Word of God. Read it. It doesn't take very long. When I was at university doing my Master's, I read it three and a half times a year in three years. One book a day. What am I saying? Listen, I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is that 
It's not so important to memorize it, it's very important to read it. <coughs> because when you've read it, the scripture says when he brings you before the elders, when he brings before you the council, he said, when you're brought before those that accuse you, in that very moment, at that very time, he will give you the words to say and call them back to your remembrance. Listen, if you've never read it, you'll never be able to call it back to remembrance. It's a simple thing. Learn to walk in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Learn to understand the voice of the anointing. Learn to understand how the anointing moves. Learn to understand how the anointing literally takes you from one place to the next place and how it changes at each step that you take. I don't need the anointing to wash pots if I'm driving a car. <laughs> <coughs> kind of silly, isn't it? Well, I've got the anointing to wash the pots, but I'm going down the, the, the I-96. I it's not going to help me very much. I need the anointing to drive that car. I need the anointing to be able to see what's going on around me in case somebody starts to swipe, sideswipe me. And you know the devil does that? He tries to, tries to sideswipe you. And he'll do it in church. He'll do it in, in a place like this. Why? Because he's full of sick people trying to get better. Church is not a safe place, guys. Grow well, up, it's time to understand something. Your enemy is roaring about and roaming about looking for whom he may desire. And guess what? Most of them are in here. <laughs> Most of them are in here. I, if I could tell you the times I've been hurt by people in church, we're the only people who are right. dead. Yeah. It's true. We say, Lord, we want you to come in, come to church. Lord, we, 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 we love you and all this, that, and the other. Oh, you've got to get rid of those tattoos now, man. Those tattoos, listen, if you don't do that, you're going to hell. Yeah. Come on, I've heard it so many times. I have one friend who was a, a lovely person in the church, and she went to the pastor and she said, Pastor, Pastor, I really want to just bless you. I want to do something. I, I work for the local authority, the local hospital, uh, and I'm actually a cleaner. So I know all about sanitation and about healthy cleaning in, in hospitals because it's a sterile environment. She said, can I clean the toilets? No. Nobody wanted to clean the toilets. Oh, I, I guess it's the same all over the world. <laughs> Nobody wanted to clean the toilets. And here she was saying, look, I, 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 I'm, I'm trained to clean your toilets. Wow. And this pastor says, go, go away. You're not fit to clean the toilets or anything else. Ignorance. That's what he said. He said, clear off, you're not fit to clean the toilets. I don't want you anywhere near the church. She loved Jesus. Be careful what comes out of your mouth, saints. Just because you don't like somebody, bless them. Bless those who persecute you. Pray for those who abuse you. Lift them up before the throne of grace. You're not called to judge them, you're called to love them. You're not called to judge your brother or a sister. You're not called to judge your ministry. Just because they're doing it different to the way you do it, don't mean it's wrong. Understand something. You are God's agent. You are the person that God has chosen. You are the person that God has equipped. You are the person that God has called. You are the person that God has set apart. You are unique. You are special. You are literally the one he will provision. You are the one who he will send. You are the one who will go and say, thus saith the Lord. And the only one that will limit that is you. Because you're the one that says, I can't go. I can't do this. I can't do that. And God says, well, I've given you everything you need. What more do you want? What more do you want? What is it that God has that you need to do the ministry that he has not yet given you? And if that's the case, you haven't got an excuse left. Just go out and do it. But, but, Matthew, and Mark, Luke, and John. Four books. 
three synoptic gospels, one book of love. The canon of the Christian Bible, this thing, is kind of out of order. Because Mark writes first, Matthew reads Mark and takes from Mark and writes his own. And then Luke comes and looks at Matthew and Mark and brings his letter, his book. John writes his own gospel, his own book of love. But he also writes 1 John, 2 John and 3 John and the book of Revelation. And they were written around about 100 AD. God is still writing the scriptures through you. The book of Acts has never been ended. It has an open ending. It's one of the only books in the Bible that has not yet been finished because it's still being written today through each one of you. You have been called. You have been given the gifts of healing. And that's the plural. It's the only gift that is mentioned in the plural. It's gifts of healing. I started off this word by speaking in tongues. I like to do that. Why? Because the Bible says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. Why was I doing that? Because I needed to hear from God what to say. I needed to hear from God clearly what to say because I hadn't got a clue. I'd heard Pastor Lisa, I'd heard Pastor Bill. I, I really did not have a clue how to what to what to do. And he said, light a fire. Now, I don't know if any of you guys in here actually don't believe in the gift of the Holy Spirit or perhaps maybe don't even believe in the gift of tongues. But what I can tell you is this, that once you actually physically get it, you'll believe it. straight guy. I was over in Pakistan and um, I have to rely on the anointing a lot when, when I do things because without it I'd be lost. So they locked me in this room in Pakistan with a, a, an, an inch and a half thick door with a padlock on both sides in the middle of a community, literally back in the middle, you know. <laughs> And I've got all these, this, these, these Muslim Christian overcomers around me. Now I say, I, I make the distinction Muslim Christian overcomers. Because they live in a land which is Muslim. And they came from Muslim into Christianity. And so they still keep a little bit of that identity in their Christianity. And so there's a respect that goes between the Muslim Christians and the Non-Muslim Christian, believe, you know, whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I'm there in there, and this room is the walls are about three and a half feet to four feet thick. And I looked around the room, and it's not much bigger than sort of six foot by six foot. It's only a small room. It's got a single bed in it. It's got a fridge in it, and it's got a little table in it, and a fan in the roof, and there's no windows. So. I said to the guy, I said, listen, what happens if you padlock the front door, uh, the door? He said, pray. He said, we padlock the front door, you get on your knees and pray and padlock the inside. I said, why is that? He said, can't the Taliban come over the roof? He said, if they kill all of us, somebody will come and rescue you. That was his attitude. If they kill all of us here, they won't be able to get into you because they'll think it's a storeroom that's, that's jammed. Because they won't be able to get through the inner padlock. And there are people who know that you are here, so if anything happens to us, they will come and get you. I went, okay, Lord. <laughs> Got this. So they take me to Jinnah. They take me to a church in Jinnah which is the name of the, the airport and also the name of the main hospital in Karachi. There was, I was speaking to about a thousand believers, overcomers, Christians at this, this place. I, they set up a rally for me and I got bishops there and ministers. Because I, I teach ministers, I train ministers. That's part of the gifting that, that God has placed in my life. That's why they call me chancellor. I'm kind of enjoying myself at the moment because I'm sort of just 
I'm kind of relaxed, you know. And um, we get down the road, and I've got this guy here, and the guy here, and I've got I've got a Muslim who's with me here, and they, these two guys on either side of us have got pump action shotguns. And I'm walking down the high street of Karachi in Yinnah, past all these Muslims with a Bible in my hand. I'm called Al Kitab, Man of the Book. I'm, seen, I'm known as man of the book. I had a, I had li a license from the, Iranian, the, 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 the embassy in Karachi to go in as a Christian minister to teach at the, minute, the Christian churches. It's in my passport. So I'm, I'm going down there and I'm walking down there and we get to this house and this is a true story by the way. And we walk in and I walk in and there's one man. I'm kind of back at the beginning. You know, I was talking about one man in a football stadium. I'm now in what the house with my interpreter and one man. And I look around and he, my interpreter says to me, you can start now. And I looked and I thought, well, there's only a chair and a table. And I said, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to do a Bible study or do, do a prayer meeting? What, what exactly want you to do? Because we were going to church. Now, I'm not bothered whether there's 50 or 500 or just one. So he says, you can start now. So I'm thinking, I'm at church. This is where he's brought me to speak to one man. So the man walks in and my interpreter says to me, you can go now. Go with this man. I said, does he speak English? He said, no. I said, well, I don't speak Urdu. He said, I cannot come where you're going. I said, pardon? He said, I am not allowed to go where you are going. So you go with this one man. So we walked out of that room and we walked into another room. And there were six women standing in the middle of the room. Okay, so I'm in the harem. I'm with his wife and daughters. Now, in Muslim countries, they wear the hijab. You're not allowed to see their faces. None of these ladies had their hijabs on. I was being given a privilege. I was being allowed to go into the room with the man's wife and his daughters and being allowed to see their faces. I want you to understand what's going on here. My interpreter couldn't go because he had to respect the rules of that society. But I was a visiting minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and I was there on, on a commission from Almighty God to do something and I can't speak Urdu and they can't speak English. So this universal sign language comes out, the man who's taken me in puts his hands together in the form of pray. So I literally said, okay, you want me to pray? Yeah, I said, Put my hand over one of the latest heads without touching. I said, can I touch? So that gave me permission to lay my hand on the ladies' heads. And I said, um, Urdu? Mm. Er, no, no Urdu. He went, no English? That's about all he could say. So I tongued. <laughs> so I got pushed on the table and took my beer and take it to see. I need to catch this. We're starting a fire. We're starting a fire right now. Are you listening to the anointing? As I speak, another voice will speak. Some of you have never interpreted. What are you going to interpret? Holy Spirit's going to begin to move right now. I'm calling that which is not as though it is. I'm speaking that which is into the atmosphere. I'm speaking by faith. I'm saying, Holy Spirit, I want you to move now. As I, as I, do, as I go through this little story, Lord, I want you to begin to move in the lives of individuals. So 
So I'm standing in this room and I'm going, Josh Chantley, Bato, Josh Lemon, Ketosaka. Nemo Kuma Lessente, Giba, Jota, Sevente, Kesike. No more supposition, take a loss of a Kayan ticket to Sene. Nemo Kushendri, Borosima Kaliente, for the life that you have led has been glorifying my name. And I have called you, I have chosen you, and I am causing you to begin to move for me. And as you move for me, so you will begin to flow in an anointing which is not of your own. You will begin to move in an anointing which is not of your own. You will begin to see my glory. You will begin to understand my presence. You will begin to literally begin to feel my presence in your life. And I'm praying over this first woman in this manner. And as I finished, she began to cry. So I go to the next lady and I put my hand on her head very gently. For I have said that you will achieve that unto which I have sent. I have literally spoken into the situation. I have said that it will literally come to pass. So but you believe this? You believe this? So walk in my name. And she began to cry. So the third thing. For I have stated that your healing will take place. I have literally spoken into the darkness that you see yourself standing in. I cause you to stand in my likeness. I cause you to stand in the glory that I have placed around you. Understand that I am controlling this. It is not your problem. Okay, she began to cry. And obviously, as I went around, each of the ladies, they all began to cry. Then I went to the man and I said, may I pray? He went, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I prayed over him in tongues and then he began to cry. So I know I got seven people standing in a room, all crying and blubbing like children. And I mean crying. I walk out, I job done. Something else you need to understand about the ministry, when you've done it, get out of that. That's right. You don't need to control what takes place afterwards. Yes. When you're being called by God to do something, do what he's called you to do and then step back and allow him to move. Allow him to be the person that he has called you to be. He said, listen, gather my people together unto me. Those who have been called and made a covenant sacrifice by my name and the heavens will declare my glory. He doesn't need you to declare the glory. He's prepared to declare his own glory for what he's just done as a result of you calling the people together. I want you to understand something. You're an army. You're on fire. Yes. I can see the anointing on each and every one of you in this room. I can literally see the anointing falling. And it's not missing anyone in this room. It's not missing anyone in this room. He's beginning to move. He's beginning to touch. He's beginning to heal. He's beginning to literally, 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 literally just begin to, to just do something. It was so easy for me to call out individual situations. Doesn't want me to do that. He says, take a step of faith. You want that situation answered? Take a step of faith. You want that circumstance changed? Take a step of faith. You want that marriage put back together? Take a step of faith. You want that, those bills that, that, that have been causing major, major problems. Listen, that's generalization. It's not prophecy. Take a step of faith. I'm speaking generally. I'm talking about things that you could, you could go in any room in the world and somebody could say these things and they're talking generalizations. They could apply to anybody or fit any individual. That's right. There's a big difference between generalizations 
And someone who comes in and says, Thus saith the Lord, and begins to speak directly yeah. into your life, as yeah. you will do tonight as you come forward, as you begin to lift your hands. Come on, stand up and just begin to worship. Stand up and begin to lift your hands. Stand up and begin to glorify God. It's you and Jesus, not me and Jesus. It's you and Jesus as an individual. Just begin to stand before Almighty God and just take, take time to, to understand Him. Remember that you and He are one. He in you is greater than He that is in the world. Remember that He called you. He chose you. He equipped you. He has literally provisioned you. Listen, just, just understand that you are able to do for above exceedingly, abundantly above all that you would even ask or think. Just begin to call on his name. Begin to ask him about those circumstances. Begin to bring those things before him. Begin to just glorify his name. Literally just begin to worship him. Begin to just flow in the things of the Spirit. Just begin to flow. Let him move. Let him move. Let him move. Not me moving. Not you moving. Not a next door neighbor moving. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing you just have your own private party with Jesus just have your own private party with Jesus come on it's time just if you speak in tongues just worship Ah, ye 